Hey guys, how's it going? Tujin here with MBT Studios. So with all this, this corona epidemic going on and me practicing self-isolation, I've been spending a lot of time at home. And while I was home, I solved a problem that I was having with my near-field audio setup. So before I really talk about the problem, um, let me talk about my setup right here. So what I have as speakers are my KEF LS50s. These are the passive versions, the limited edition blacks. And my preamp, at DAC, and headphone amplifier is an Audio GD NFB28. Now this is obviously my amp for my headphones, the Sony uh, Z7 Mark IIs, but also my DAC and preamp. So how I switch between my headphones and my speakers is just through this button right here. So H stands for headphones and P stands for preouts. And these preouts go to my Audio GD amp right here. If I just want to light that up right there. And this amp gives about 100 watts to each uh, speaker. And then finally, I have my Sumiko S10 subwoofer, which is basically uh, a Sonos Faber branded subwoofer that really is just a uh, REL sub. So. My issue stems from integrating that subwoofer with these LS50s. Now, the reason why I have a subwoofer with these LS50s is because I want a full range sound. And LS50s on a uh, desk setup, um, they kind of roll off at 60 hertz. And when you have them this close to the wall, you really don't want them playing no notes. So I actually have the uh, ports plugged and I wanted to tie the sub. So the problem isn't with the sub. The sub kit has a low pass uh, filter which allows it to play certain frequencies uh, and what I have it set at is 80. So from 80 hertz and below, the sub is playing. The problem is my Audio GD amp sends a full range signal to my Cat LS 50s. So how did I solve that? Well, one way of getting through this is just having an integrated amp that has subwoofer integration built in but I wanted something with a fall, small footprint and I didn't want to be redundant. I didn't want to have an integrated amplifier when I already have you know, my Audio GD and a dedicated power amp. So what I did add was a mini DSP. Now, sub amplifiers have uh, sub outs, but they don't actually have a high pass filter and that's what I, what I was looking for. So with the mini DSP right there, uh, I don't know if you can see that, um, it essentially works as a passive uh, crossover. So how it works is I have the software right here and I have two inputs. So basically the pre-outs from my Audio GD uh, preamp um, goes inside the mini DSP and it produces uh, four outputs. And those four outputs are two for subwoofer and two for my left and right speakers. So essentially the solution to my, all my problems is right here. And uh, I use the mini DSP 2.1 crossover um, software, which is one of the multiple uh, configurations or um, basically software that you can use with the mini DSP. And I have it set at 80 Hertz for, for the high pass, which is all the high frequencies from 80 Hertz and above to uh, each LS50 speaker and 80 Hertz down to my subwoofer. Now, the reason why I care so much about a high pass filter is because um, although the LS50s roll off at about 60 to 80 hertz, roughly there with the port plugged, um, it still tries to play low notes. And that muffles the sound, especially near field. And it makes it redundant because it um, tries to play those sounds while the subwoofer is playing them. And what happens is that you get a huge hump. And I didn't want that. So having this uh, set up basically cleared the sound up for me. Now, the mini DSP isn't the only thing that does that. Um, in my room, I have an Emotiva preamp that has like an analog um, crossover knob at the back where basically when it sends the pre outs out, it can do that. But the mini DSP just made my life so easy. And crossover isn't the only thing that the mini DSP does. Um, this is the non HD, this is just a regular one. Um, I did some EQ finally at the end. And uh, LS50s for me are a bit hot in the treble. So I made a small tweak, if you can see that over there. Um, a negative three gain at 20,000 hertz. And that made these speakers so much better for me. And um, 
I thought I just wanted to share that with you guys because um, subwoofer integration is um, honestly something that I took for granted when I had an integrated amp. And if you're someone like me who has a near field setup and you're finding your bass boomy or you're having uh, issues just integrating your sub or you just don't know how to integrate your sub, um, you know, in the best manner possible, I would suggest a mini DSP. Now, the subwoofer itself has an LFE in. It also has this uh, uh, wire. It uses, I think it's a Nutrix connector, and it's basically called a high level in. So this is another way of hooking up the sub. So essentially, this goes to the back of your subwoofer, and then these four wires go straight to your amp. Now, this is great if you have a floor standard speaker uh, that reaches pretty low already because this does not apply a high pass. So if you have a floor standard and you just want, you know, the tiny bit um, of that extension that you're missing out with, this works out great because your subwoofer gets the matching uh, tone, tonal, you know, differences that your amp and your entire chain has instead of going straight to your uh, preamp. But for my cases and uh, what I want and with these LS50s, um, having a high pass and a low pass filter really uh, saved the day for me. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know about, you know, what I've done and uh, the solution to my problems because um, I've been through so many different amps and uh, integrateds and, uh, you know, preamps. And this basically solves a lot of my problems. It's a way to, you know, turn my LS50 passives into you know sort of like ls50 wirelesses it adds that um layer of equalization and um you know subwoofer management that you don't get normally with regular ls50s and you're probably asking why didn't i go ls50 wirelesses well the reason for that is because i don't like having all my eggs in one basket what i mean by that is if the amp goes bad um either i have to warranty it but those electronics i believe are only warranted for one year and I don't like putting myself in that situation where I have to pay for repairs. With LS50 passives, I'm saving a bit of money, but I'm able, also able to reuse all the gear that I have, less redundancy, and with this mini DSP, I'm really happy. So yeah, I think uh, the mini DSP is really underrated. And if any of you guys are trying to integrate a subwoofer into your near field setup or just to any setup, even like home theater, or um, you want to apply equalize, uh, e um, EQ or just uh, room correction, uh, you can do that with a mini DSP. And I just started scratching the surface with uh, the mini DSP altogether because you can get a mic, you can do room correction using REW, and uh, really perfect your system. So I'm gonna check that out and I'll let you know how that goes. Um, that basically is it guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think and uh, make sure to like the video if you liked it and uh, comment and subscribe if you haven't. Peace.